thank the organizers for this invitation. Um, I am a pediatrician, a diabetes specialist, and I'm a clinician at Mott Children's Hospital. I am also a researcher and associate professor at the University of Michigan with appointments in the School of Medicine and Public Health. But I actually have an alternative identity online as doctor, as designer, because I'm very passionate about the notion that human-centered design can, will, and should transform the healthcare enterprise that we have right now. So I tweet, I tweet quite a bit, there's my Twitter handle, um, and I blog, and I talk about a patient-centered future for healthcare. But I actually have no formal training in design. Design was actually something that I encountered accidentally two years ago when my family and I went on sabbatical to the Bay Area. We were going to be gone for a year, and we brought our kids with us. We have two amazing kids, B and S, but they both have life-threatening food allergies. So B has actually been in the emergency room multiple times because of his life-threatening reactions, and because of that, we have to teach his caregivers how and when to give this medication called the EpiPen, which is a, a medication that you give um, in the case of an emergency. But unfortunately, this is what the healthcare system gave us. And I would call this a design fail because this is two pieces of paper that are really hard to use to explain to a caregiver how to save your child's life. So there we were in Silicon Valley. We were inspired to make a YouTube video. And when I say we, I mean <laughs> the collective we. There's my child playing violin. Um, I am a lazy tiger mother, so I was not going to make this video alone. I was going to make this a team effort. He was six at the time. He had just learned to read and write, and I thought this would be a great opportunity for him to learn about his allergies. And so we did this video together. I scripted it, but he narrated it, and he illustrated it himself. And here's our prototype. I am allergic to dairy and nuts. When I have a few hives or raging mouth, how do you give me antihistamine? Oh, when you put the purple strip on my tongue. When you give me an EpiPen Junior. Blue pill, weak pose, confused trouble breathing, strong lips, swollen tongue, with voice many hives. Or if I have two systems involved like swollen lips and tongue or hives and vomiting or diarrhea. <laughs> How do you do the EpiPen Junior? Step one. Take off blue cap. Step two. No, do not touch the orange tip. You will poke yourself instead of me. <laughs> Step three. Push orange tip into thigh muscle. Hold for 10 seconds. Then call 911. Thanks for taking good care of me. So I posted the video on my blog, shared it with his teacher. The next day, she shared it with the entire school. And it even went a little bit viral. It got picked up by some pediatric bloggers like Seattle Mama Doc. Dr. Green, health technology experts like Susanna Fox. And so I would actually call this prototype a design success. 1,479 views, that's pretty good. But it's really not about the metrics, right? It was the design that we needed to solve the problem that we had for health. 
and we were able to figure it out together. So B actually has his own blog now. It's called IHaveFoodAllergies.tumblr.com. You can go check it out. Um, and we ended up doing a whole series of videos. We ended up making a trilogy because we had a snafu with ingredients and food handling, and we thought we had to educate the providers about that. And then we got back to Michigan last fall, and he had a flare of his asthma, so we talked about his allergy medications as well. And then I even did a little bit of design myself. Uh, I needed a low-fidelity version so that I could give a paper version to his caregivers in addition to having the electronic versions that had the emergency information as well as the instructions in written form using his illustrations and information about allergens. So there were three design insights I had about the production of health and the future of healthcare from this experience. First was that we were experts. As patient and caregiver, we knew exactly what problem we needed to solve. Second, we were makers. We had access to very simple tools like an iPhone and screencasting software, and we could upload to social media channels like YouTube and blogs in order to distribute our prototype. And three, we were collaborators. I don't have the charm that would have made this video a successful prototype. He had the skills and the artistic talent, I added a little medical information, and I pulled together um, the primitive production, right? Um, so to me, this is the future of healthcare. Patient as expert, patient as maker, and patient as collaborator. But to you know, get to that future of healthcare, we have to overcome the, whole, the culture of healthcare, which says that doctors are experts and not patients, and says that only certain certified health professionals should be creating health and that has a system that really supports a one-way system for creation of health, doctor to patient. So when I got back to Michigan, I started collaborating with some incredible colleagues from the Stamp School of Art and Design, Matt Kenyon and John Marshall, and we began prototyping the application of design thinking to healthcare. Validating and valuing patients as experts with a lot of wisdom about their own health, including them as uh, or letting them drive the conversation about what problems need to be identified and prioritized, and involving them as co-designers in the creation of health. We paired together designers with patients to create educational materials like digital comic books and digital games. And we're trying to create a culture of health within, or a culture of design within healthcare that treats design not as a distraction from health, but actually a critical tool for the creation of health. And along the way, we met some makers. I don't know if you're familiar with the maker movement, a lot of you are, but it's a do-it-yourself technology movement that supports learning by doing in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. And I started to make the connections between the maker movement and participatory design. DIY, patient is expert. Learning by doing, patient is maker. Peer-to-peer -peer learning, patient as collaborator. So we held the first Movie Make Health Fest this August at the University of Michigan, where we brought together patients and healthcare providers, designers, tinkers, and makers to explore the incredible opportunities and the incredible creations that might come about by integrating making with health. And we've created a collaborative innovation network, which we call Health Designed by Us, which we hope you will all join to help further this and scale this work. So what I dream of is healthcare that doesn't look like this, doctor to patient, passive and solitary, but healthcare that looks like this, patient to patient, active and collaborative. So B is already thinking about the next prototypes that he's going to be building. He actually built a couple of prototypes for the We Make Health Fest, <laughs> both cardboard and digital. And um, he actually gave the opening remarks as well, and he has some words of wisdom for us that say, you know, it takes teamwork, teamwork and creativity. It's not just you, it's us. Health designed by us. And I just want to thank my colleagues and collaborators um, from University of Michigan, but across the globe as well, for supporting uh, this endeavor to integrate uh, patient-centered participatory design into our healthcare system. Thank you.